Right, yes, that's true. Well, for a town that was once a dusty outpost and a target for frequent Indian raids, Uvalde has been built quite a resume. It's been home to an impressive list of celebrities and also politicians. But how exactly did Uvalde get its name? Justin Horn digs into the city's history for the answer. Uvalde wasn't always Uvalde. It was originally called Encina, named after the oak trees in the area. When they were going to incorporate the county in 1856, there was a law on the books that said the county seat and the county have to have the same name. And Encina was in Uvalde County, hence the change. As for the name Uvalde, well, for that, we go back to the Spanish rule of Texas. In 1790, Juan de Ugalde was the uh, Spanish governor of Coahuila, and this part of Texas was part of Coahuila. Ugalde, a well-known figure, is the namesake. Don't know how we switched the G to a V, but that's, that's what it was. From there, despite Indian raids and a few years of lawlessness, Uvalde began to thrive. It's home to one of Texas's first opera houses. And did you know it was once considered the honey capital of the world? And that came from the 1900 World's Fair. Uh, our honey was entered and was judged the best honey in the world. On top of that, Uvalde was also home to a Texas governor, Dolph Briscoe, and a United States Vice President, John Nance Garner. But that's not where it ends. For its size, Uvalde boasts an impressive list of hometown celebrities. Of course, you have Matthew McConaughey, plus the Grammy-winning group Los Palominos, world boxing champion Oscar Alvarado, Super Bowl winner Van McElroy, actor Dana Andrews. And then we had Dale Evans, who was the queen of the cowgirls. She was married to Roy Rogers, proving this town has a can-do attitude with a storied history. Justin Horn, KSAT 12 News.